Now, if you've been following this series, you know that Tyler made it over during the summer and we were able to sit down and discuss some hot topics uh, related to air guns. Uh, we've broken this up into a number of segments that we're sharing on Air Gun Depot and on the Pyramid Air channel on YouTube. Uh, today, we are going to discuss what it's like to work in the air gun industry and we're going to take on that eternal hot topic that's been discussed since the beginning of time. What's better, the TX200 or the HW97? So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this. Yeah. Mm. I mean, this is tough. I mean, for me, it's like complaining about working in the air gun industry would be just incredibly ungrateful in, in a way. No, no, you're wrong. I um, mean, I, look, it's a, at the end of the day, you're still working for a living, so you can complain. Um, because there are parts of everybody's job that you don't like, right? And that's, that's a fact. There are things that I don't like. I mean, it's not just sitting and shooting all day. In fact, it's usually not shooting. Yeah, you all think that it's just sitting and shooting all day and filming videos to make guns look excellent. It's not. You know, the, there's a lot of writing that goes in, in. You know, for me, there's a lot of writing sure. of, of, of guides and uh, different yeah. things like this. Explaining. Your and my job are, are a little different in that regard. I, I don't get to do as much of the writing stuff, and I'm okay with that because it's very time consuming. Yeah. Uh, and both of us, you know, I work with a little bit of social media. Sure. I think you do probably yep. more, more of it than I do. Yeah. I, 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 I'm big on the Instagram. Not, I, I don't really handle our Facebook. Probably because we have way more likes, followers, and stuff on Facebook, so they don't want to let me break it. You know, yeah, they gave me the Instagram and said, hey, build this up. Okay, yeah. I can do that. So. But what is the thing that you don't like about this industry? <sighs> so... I think it's, it's more work, it's not the industry itself, it's working in the industry. And I think any time, and people warned me about this before I started working in the air gun industry because they knew how much I loved air guns. It's the whole like, you see behind the curtain on some things and you realize you know, that, that everything isn't glamorous, right? It, it's not you know, this cool looking gun that you've lusted after for years is actually like the highest return rate item at the company, you know, stuff like that where you're like, that's a really cool looking gun or I owned one of those and it was great. And, and then somebody comes along and tells you that like, oh yeah, we're probably gonna discontinue that gun because we've gotten like 10 of the 20 we sold back and there are big problems with it. And you're like, oh, I didn't know. And it just, it's that, you lose the 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 like the the childlike excitement and wonderment, you know, of uh, of like getting the new air gun. You know, it, it's not always what it's cracked up to be, but but luckily, I mean, most of the time, you know, we get to we absolutely get to play with some really cool stuff and, and get our hands on awesome stuff. But you know, yeah, it's sometimes like from a business perspective, having to make hard decisions about things you may be personally a fan of or you know stuff like that, it, it, that can be difficult. Um, but probably the worst part of it for me, just being an air gun fan, because I want, I want everybody to have as many options as possible and to have, you know, exciting products that are always available on hand, ready to ship, all that stuff, and it's just not the reality sometimes. Yeah. So. This is one of the age-old arguments in air guns, I think. And, and I don't even know if it's an argument. It's like, it's more of a conundrum. Because here's what happens. People call up and they say, well, I'm looking for the best spring gun money can buy. Okay, so you're either gonna buy a TX200 or a 97K. It's very simple, right? They're, those are the only two options. And oftentimes it's really just aesthetics. Or is it? Mm -hmm. All right, go. No, it's not. Because I think we both have our favorites here. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's the HW 97K. Why? Because uh, that is the original, for one thing. Well, the 77 is the original. Out of the two we're talking about, oh, okay. one is based on the other. Well, in to part, a large extent. Yeah, okay. okay. Sure, I'll give you that. They're both and, great guns, by the way. Like, I don't yeah. think either of us could dispute that. And for me, you get an ambidextrous stock. Mm -hmm. I care mm -hmm. about the left-handed people in the world. Mm. Some of my... Some all like 8% of them or whatever it is? Yeah, I care yeah. about all of you guys. Okay. Uh, at Ergon Depot, in general, we care about you. Oh, that's good. And so you get an ambidextrous stock. The stock, to me, feels 
so much better. Okay. I mean, I, I think I think the TX200 has done a lot of cool stuff with their stock, but to me, it just doesn't fit as well. It just doesn't feel as good. Okay. Mind you, he is also like a giant, a physical giant. His hands are like twice the size of mine, which have been confirmed as normal sized hands. So he is just outside of spec, as they say. I don't think they've been confirmed as normal size. Who even does that? Is there like some registry that people with hand Google insecurities it. send their hand print into? Don't you know Google has all the information you'll ever need on it? Well, I'm glad you've checked that. I have. Um, so uh, for me, it fits so much better. Mm, okay. Yeah, uh, I, you know. Yeah, but how do you get over the fact that like out of the box is kind of buzzy? You just fix it. Oh, so now you're telling me you're selling me like a $500 gun I have to work on? You, if you care about the buzz, you fix it. Oh, okay. If you don't, then you just shoot it. What it boils down to is accuracy. And for me, the HW97 is just more accurate. Well, it fits you better, so that would make sense, right? I, I could understand that. And it shoots better. For you. And it is more accurate. No. Okay. Let, let's clear this up here right now, okay? I would never put down uh, Yrox barrels because they are fantastic. I will agree with you there. Uh, but you can't tell me that it is any more accurate than the Lothar Walther barrel of a TX200. You know how I know? Because I've owned many of both. They are both just as accurate as one, uh, but, as one another. But when you're shooting, it's kind of hard to tell which one's more accurate. Right. I, mean, I, I am a, a lot better with a spring gun than you. you. You've got yeah. kind of a spread and it's just And it's kinda, super tight. One whole groups. Absolutely. So here's the thing. TX200, while I will give you, I'm going to neutralize the argument that they copied the record trigger right now by saying it doesn't matter because the CD trigger on a TX200 or a Pro Sport for that matter is better. Um, it can go lighter and is lighter out of the box with just as crisp of a second stage wall and is just probably the best trigger on a spring gun on the market. Granted. Okay. Second, it is way smoother out of a out of the box than the 97. Um, it just it's just like uh, it glides that gun. It, there's no buzz, no twang. It's just solid thunk into the shoulder. Okay. Three, I have a walnut stock option with a TX 200 that your 97 does not give me, and that's not a you problem. That's a, a, a Wyrock problem in Germany. I honestly don't know why they don't do but it. Can you get a blue laminate? Do I care about a blue laminate? It's heavier. And it's not as beautiful or regal. Okay, the, the walnut stock on the TX200 is can They're, they're usually can amazing, be. right. And, amazing. and it's not that Air Arms doesn't care about the lefties, folks. They do make it in a left-handed version for those of you out there that are the, uh, what, like, 8 percent And it's the same price. Is it? Oh, isn't it? I think it's a little more expensive. Oh, it might be a little more. But to be fair, they make less of them, so, I mean, it's your fault for being backwards. Um, we don't think that here at Air Guns. And, and look, and, and at the end of the day, you cannot beat the deep bluing of an Air Arms gun, in my opinion. Now, that, that is truly an opinion. The fish scaling on the stock isn't for everybody, particularly Travis over here. He doesn't like the finer things in life. I don't want um, my gun to look like a mermaid's behind. I mean... That's a beautiful thing to look at. Why wouldn't you want to be looking at that? Exactly. See, rather, he didn't think about it that way, okay. guys. Very short-sighted, this one over here. Um, look, at the end of the day, I think I think... We could argue this until the cows come home. And, and, okay? and we've got battery, okay? Oh, okay, so go. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the whole feel of the stock just gives you a solid feel. This is a, this is a gun that's going to last forever on the HW97. A TX it doesn't, doesn't do that It for doesn't you? have, uh, the TX200 has this funny belly on it, which, you know, I don't know what to do helps with. Helps for offhand shooting. Uh, you say that. No, I know that. Yeah, it, it helps little people. See, you talk about shooting, I shoot. <laughs> That's the difference right there, okay? That's the... <laughs> I, I have shot a gun before. I know you have. I watched. You missed all those offhand shots. Really? Which is He's why... He's going to go there. After he yeah. poisons me I, and, then, and then sets yeah. me up for the offhand shooting, you're really going to do that. It's not my fault. Okay, so what is your one th the one thing you like about the HW97? So the HW um, does have a faster shot cycle than a TX200. So one of the reasons the TX200 is so super smooth um, is partially because it's a little bit slower. So what I mean by that is from the time you pull the trigger and let that piston go, 
uh, it takes just a little bit longer for it to hit home and start pushing that pellet uh, out of the barrel than it does on a 97. And we all know that a faster lock time tends to translate into accuracy. Yeah, it makes it easier to shoot well. But what that also means is that somebody who's not as good of a shot is going to look better than he would with a TX200 because he hasn't learned how to shoot properly, folks. It's oh. really that simple. <laughs> uh, no, but in all seriousness, that, that's where I, I give uh, the HW the nod. And like I said, I own both. Um, they're both fantastic. Now, now the counter part to that side yeah. is that the TX200 is easier to work on. Absolutely. I mean, and just the fact. Now, now to be fair, in a, in a sub-12 foot-pound configuration of, of the 97 or 77 for that matter, they're super easy to work on. A little bit more complicated to get apart. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can't beat a TX200 in terms of being able to take it apart. You do not need a spring compressor. Um, I, I, you could still use one if you want to, but it's really not necessary. They're just, it, it was really what, if, if Y-Rock was going to go back now and come out with a 77, 97, 107, all right? Uh, 007. Or, oh, Hans, call your boy. Um, we'll make it happen. Um, if they were going to do that, they would make a gun that's kind of a lot more like the TX than, you know, than I think a lot of people give it credit for. Um, so yeah, but they're both great guns. I mean, you're not going to go wrong guns. either way. And, it, and uh, to be fair, if you want a synthetic stock, the 97 is really the only option in a nice high quality gun, uh, or at least under you lever. You can get a stainless steel. You know, you can get you can oh, get the, not actually stainless. You can get the chromed. Uh, you not know, chromed the, either. Jason just cut that part. <laughs> when the black line. I mean, with the what is it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know what you're talking about. What, what is it? It's not chromed. It's what not stainless steel. It? What is it? Nickel plated or something? Nickel plated. Yeah, yeah. plating. Yeah, you can get the nickel plated with a black stock that looks yeah. pretty darn sexy. I agree. That's the exact word I was going to use. Get out of my head. I mean, it is sexy. Oh, wow. And uh, all weather, you know, you can take this out. Uh, of, for the synthetic, you know, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the, that's like it, the one drawback about the nice bluing and stuff is that you know you have to take a little bit better care of it. But at the end of the day, if you're spending that much money, you should be buying something you're going to take care of. Either way. I really enjoyed being able to sit down and discuss these topics with Tyler. I hope you've enjoyed watching them. Make sure you subscribe to both channels because the next episode's coming out in a week on Pyramid Air's YouTube channel. Now, I hope that Tyler and I will get a chance to sit down again sometime in the future and film a number of these again. So please leave comments in the section below of topics you'd like us to discuss. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.